Kubernetes is awesome, right? We just need to define the desired state and it will figure out how to convert it into the actual state. Most of us are not even interacting with Kubernetes API directly, but by pushing manifests to Git repositories and letting GitHub's tools like Argo CD and Flux do the synchronization. Everything is amazing until it isn't. Unfortunately, we cannot always just push manifests to Git repositories and let GitHub's tools figure out everything. Sometimes we need to orchestrate orchestrators. Today, I will focus on a few less known, yet very, very important features of Argo CD that can help us orchestrate Kubernetes resources and make sure that they are synchronized in the right order. Now, when you hear the right order, you might think that I lost my mind. You might be thinking that Argo CD will figure it all out so that you can watch Netflix while it does the work. Well, that is actually true in some cases, but false in others. Let me lay down a few problems. To begin with, Argo CD performs a dry run before it starts syncing resources. That's great, except when it's not. There will be cases when dry run fails miserably because it thinks that resources we're trying to synchronize do not have resource definitions. A simple example would be to apply crossplane provider config before the provider itself is applied. If you push both to Git at the same time, Argo CD will perform a dry run on the provider config and fail because the provider does not exist. The second problem I want to discuss is the order resources are synchronized. Most of the time, the order does not matter. For example, if you try to create a pod that references a secret that does not yet exist, Kubernetes will put it into the pending state and wait and wait and wait until the secret is created. The pod will eventually be created. But if you try to upgrade a pod that contains a new release of an application that requires changes to the database schema, we need to make sure that the database schema is updated before the pod is upgraded with the new release. Otherwise, the new release that expects the new schema will be deployed before the schema is updated and the application will fail. Actually, it's even worse. Application will not fail. That would be good because then Kubernetes will restart the application, but the application would misbehave. Finally, Argo CD relies heavily on specific health signals from Kubernetes resources, but not all resources are emitting the same signals. So we need to solve issues with dry run, sync ordering, and resource statuses. We'll try to fix all those issues today and make your experience with Argo CD even better. But before we move on, I have a request for you. Forget everything I said so far. Clear your mind. Is it clear? Great. Let's start where most of us start. Let's deploy an application to Kubernetes with Argo CD. Let's take a look at an application defined in Silly Demo YAML. This is a simple Argo CD application definition that points to a specific repository where the manifests are stored. There is nothing special here if you're familiar with Argo CD. If you're not, first of all, be ashamed of yourself. And once the shame wears off, stop watching this video and watch those instead. Now, let's take a look at the manifests of the application itself defined in app YAML. This one starts as a very basic one with a twist at the end. There is a deployment, a service, and an ingress. Further on, we have a secret that contains a password to the database. Now, don't judge me for storing that secret in unencrypted form in a Git repo. This is not a video about security, so I did what no one should ever do. Finally, we have something called SQL claim, which is a cross-plane composition that will create and manage a database, which in this case will be running in Google Cloud. Just as with Argo CD, I will assume that you're familiar with cross-plane because it's awesome and you should be using it. If that's not the case, well, this time there is no need to stop watching this video because understanding cross-plane is not critical for understanding what we're 
going to explore today. Just write a note to yourself to watch those videos later. So this is a stateful application, or to be more precise, a stateless application that depends on a database. Now, databases, at least SQL databases, are useless without schemas. So the final piece of the puzzle is a database schema defined in DB schema YAML. In this case, I'm using schema hero here to define the database schema. I will not go through it either since I did already a video about that as well. It's over there. So far, so good. We have an application in Kubernetes, a database server in Google Cloud, and a database schema, and all that is referenced through an Argo CD application. So let's apply the Argo CD application by executing kubectl apply and see what will happen. Now, if you go to Argo CD UI, we can see some strange things happening. Some resources like the service, the deployment, the schema hero database, ingress, and the table are not being synchronized. Why is that happening? I mean, I'm pretending I know the answer, right? Isn't Argo CD supposed to sync all the resources at once? Now, before I answer the question, let's discuss what the order of synchronization should be. Application needs a database schema and the database schema needs a database server. Since database server is defined as cross point SQL claim, I made sure that one is created before anything else. I instructed Argo CD to wait until the database server is ready before it starts synchronizing other resources. Now, to be clear, I did not have to do any of that, at least when the first release is concerned. If I did not specify any order and Argo CD tried to sync them all at once, some of those resources would fail. The pods of the application could not be created with the secret with the, the credential for the database and the secret cannot be created before the database server is created. So some resources would fail and others would be in the pending state until the dependent resources are created. And that is normal. Everything would run eventually. Yet. I did define in which order resources should be synchronized. The reason why I put extra effort will become evident when we get to deployment of the second and all other releases after that. We'll get to those releases later. For now, let's take a look at how I defined the order. Argo CD does its best to apply resources in order that makes sense. For example, if a namespace is defined, it will create it before it creates namespace scoped resources. It will create custom resource definitions, or CRDs, early on, and it will apply custom resources, or CRs, after the resource is baked into Kubernetes. What does matter is that it does not have the ability to guess in which order we want to synchronize resources beyond some common rules. It could not know that I wanted the database server to be up and running before it starts synchronizing other resources. So I had to give it a hint. Let's take another look at app YAML file. Over here, we can see that the secret with the database password contains annotation sync wave set to minus 10. Now, to understand what that means, we need to talk about phases and sync waves. There are three phases in Argo CD, pre-sync, sync, and post sync. The default phase is sync, but we can instruct Argo CD to sync specific resources before, that would be pre sync, and after the sync phase, which would be post sync. I did not define any phase, so all resources are in the same sync phase. Now, within each phase, there are waves with numeric values. Resources are synced in the order of the waves. By default, all resources are in the same wave zero. If we would like to sync something before other resources, we can assign it a negative value. And if we would like them to sync after other resources in the same phase, we can assign them a positive value. In this case, I set the sync wave annotation of the secret to minus 10, so that it is synced before other resources. I did the same with SQL claim. It also has the sync wave annotation set to minus 10. To summarize, Argo CD orders resources first by phase, then by wave, followed by the kind of the resources, and finally by the name of the resource. So even though the order often does not matter, it is predictable, and we can influence some of it by declaring phases and sync waves. 
I said that Argo CD waits until all the resources in one group are ready before moving to the next one. Here's the problem. Argo CD cannot know what it means for a resource to be ready. To be more precise, it knows what it means to be ready for resources baked into Kubernetes, but not always for custom resources. Given that almost every Kubernetes cluster has custom resources, no matter whether we are aware of that or not, we need to tell Argo CD what it means for a resource to be ready. That's defined in Argo CD config map using Lua scripts, and that's where pain begins. Let's take a look at what I have defined in values YAML file. It's scan values file I used when I installed Argo CD. Over here, I'm saying that I want to customize health checks for the API series.com and the kind SQL claim. Further down, I'm saying that if the condition type of the resource is ready and the condition status is false, the status is degraded. Similarly, if the type is ready and the status is true, then the resource is healthy. Now, unlike waves and phases that are easy to specify as annotations, this madness with statuses is just silly. To begin with, many do not know Lua, and even those who do might not be happy writing that whole script only to tell Argo CD which field of the resource contains the status. It's painful and silly, and I hate it. To be more precise, I think it's okay to have Lua scripts as an escape hatch for things that are not baked into Argo CD, but statuses are so important that I cannot see how that can be left to workarounds. It would be much more elegant and user-friendly if we could just specify the field as an annotation in resources, just as we do with phases and sync waves. It's bad, but necessary. So I had to do it. Unfortunately, we are not finished yet. There is one more piece of the puzzle missing. I already mentioned that Argo CD performs a dry run before it starts synchronizing resources. That's great, since it can catch some errors before they happen. However, it can also fail when it should not. Imagine that you push the manifest that will install Cloud Native, Postgres, or CMP, and the manifest that will create a database using CMP. Those database manifests are custom resources. Argo CD dry run would fail because it would not be able to find the CMP CRDs. It would say something like, you cannot create those resources because they are not defined in your Kubernetes cluster. There are no CRDs. Synchronization that would create those CRDs would never happen because dry run would fail. The solution to that problem is to tell Argo CD to skip dry run for specific resources. Now, I do not have an example for that in my application, but I do have it in the manifests I use to install Crossplane, the providers, and most importantly, the configuration that brought the composition that we are using into the app. Let's take a look at config SQL YAML file. Here I have an annotation that is instructing Argo CD to skip dry run for that resource. The CRD required for it to be applied will be installed eventually. So I'm not worried about the order, but I have to tell it to skip dry run so that the whole sync process starts. Otherwise, nothing would be installed. Eventual consistency is a good thing only if synchronization happens. Without synchronization, it's neither eventual nor consistent. It's nothing. Let's get back to our application and see what happened and what we might need to do to make the second release successful. It takes around five to 10 minutes for PostgreSQL database in Google Cloud to be created. I've been talking for a while now, so I expect the first release of my application, including the database server, to be ready. Let's confirm that by taking a quick look at Argo CD UI. We can see that everything is green and that the last sync is okay. I can confirm that everything is operational by sending a request to the application, which in turn will try to communicate with the database. So I will send a POST request to insert some data to the database and the GET request to retrieve the data. Everything looks great, so I can congratulate myself on a job well done, right? Well, I think I was actually lucky. Schema Hero worked. It created the database schema but it could have failed to do that and I would not find out that there's something wrong 
at least not right away and not by looking at Argo CD UI. I can explain that by showing you the spec of the Schema Hero table. Do you notice something strange? Right? No? Do you? There is no status. Neither Kubernetes nor Argo CD nor anything or anyone else can deduce whether it is ready or not, whether it is okay or it failed or something else happened to it. This is an example of a bad design made by someone who does not understand the basic principles of Kubernetes and how resources should behave. And by this, I mean Schema Hero itself. Now, I was positive to Schema Hero so far because we did not have any other Kubernetes native way to manage database schemas, but that will change soon. I found a better tool and you tell me through comments if you're interested in exploring it in one of the future videos. For now, I will ignore Schema Hero's silliness and move on to the second release of my application. For the second release of the application, we need to apply schema changes, if there are any, before we deploy that new version of the application. So let's instruct Argo CD to do just that by opening DB schema YAML file and adding a few annotations. I could set a sync wave to some negative number. However, I will add a hook instead and set it to pre-sync. That way, I do not need to worry about the order of the waves and I can be sure that the schema will be applied before the application resources are upgraded since they are all in the default phase, which is sync. Next, I will copy the notation and add it to the table as well. And finally, I will make it a bit more realistic and add another table. Now that we have changes to the schema, let's generate the manifests of the application itself. Instead of making some changes to one of the app manifests, I will just execute the money to generate them for me based on the newer release. By the way, I have a video about the money as well. So if you're not familiar with it, uh, there, there it is, you know what to do. So the schema was changed and the deployment of the app now uses a new image. So we are ready to go. And that means git add, git commit, and git push. The rest can be observed in Argo CD UI. We can see that a new table, something else was created. More importantly for this story is that the tables and the database definitions from Schema Hero are now having the icon in the shape of an anchor. That means that they have the pre-sync hook and that they will be synchronized before the application resources are upgraded. To be honest, that's not really the case because Schema Hero is not having statuses and Argo CD cannot use it to deduce its health to, and so on and so forth. Anyway, Schema Hero is silly, but if it wouldn't be, if it would work correctly, pre-sync would work well. Nevertheless, that's a separate problem to discuss. I will show you a better way to manage database schema if you're interested in that in one of the next videos. And now we're finished. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers.